in my office, I mean, I've been practicing for 15 years and we started, we were in the insurance model pretty much most of the time. And we, I finally was able to get away from the insurance succubus, if you will, about a year ago. So we've been operating outside of insurance, the model for about a year. And it is, the difference is, it's incredible. Well, what's the problem? People think like any insurance, you have insurance because you think when something goes wrong, you're going to get that covered. What's the problem with insurance? Well, I mean, you have to look, we have to, historically speaking, it's, it's more insurance, the entity aside, insurance in itself is a mindset. And America created this insurance mindset when this mindset never existed ever. It didn't exist in any of the countries. And we, in America, decided somewhere in the 70s, they're like, hey, let's, our, this company is going to provide um, money for you to go as, as a benefit. You know, and insurance back then really wasn't a thing. They didn't really know what it was. So, hey, we're going to give you so much money. Go get all your work done. And it was a benefit. It was almost like a stipend for that, for the um, companies to provide to their employees. And it sounds good, but the disease of dentistry, the cavities and the gum disease, are completely preventable diseases. Oh, absolutely. So the trouble is when you are getting paid by insurance for treatment, you have very little incentive to prevent the treatment, right? Well, these are almost like, they're, they're, they're two different topics that do come across each other. We're talking about societal, um, and an importance not on prevention, but on treatment. And that's a societal issue. I, I can't say I blame insurance companies or I blame the, the medical dental industry. This is a, first a societal problem. The society in itself does not foster prevention. Now you go to Europe and other countries in other countries, prevention is a, a major foundation of the entire society, right? The diet is preventive, the, the way their mind- start with pregnant women. And, exactly. I mean, the countries with the top four Correct. oral health countries are Denmark, uh, Sweden, I believe it is, Finland, and Germany. Yes where they provide a lot of pregnancy care. Xylitol is common. Um, they start with preschool children in mm -hmm. Finland, handing out Xylitol in preschool. They have managed to control the disease yeah, by I mean, dealing with the young. It's a societal thing. They have it takes a village type of mentality. We do not. We have, um, it's a capitalist mindset. And you get paid for treatment. So. Everything that I am, I am one of the, I've got a few specialties. One of them is a pediatric specialty and the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry's preventive ideas are all treatments. They are all sealants or fluoride treatments or fillings or they don't have a home care remedy or really good education about what mothers should be doing to prevent the transmission of disease. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it goes back to the, the society. I, I'm not blaming, I'm just saying like, we take prevention, say we can offer you prevention when in other countries, it starts even before, this is something that you have the power to do for yourself. It's an education base, it's the entire system is designed to teach you how to be a fully functioning human, how to be healthy, where in America, that I, this is my observation, is that it's based off of how can I charge you for this information? Yeah. And you personally have no information. They, it's almost like we dumb people down and, yeah. and make them feel like you don't know anything and we know everything and let us charge you for that knowledge when I'm, that knowledge has always been there since antiquity. And that's the capitalist mindset. Well, it's, it, it, it's true, although I will also say that, you know, I came out of the British National Health Service mm -hmm. system, which, although it seemed like it's a great idea, and I've heard a lot of people say here that we should have health care for everyone, what happened was the same kind of thing, but in a different mode. Mm -hmm. The government paid dentists for what they did. So the bigger the filling, the more they got paid. <laughs> you, you will always get the treatment that the dentist gets the most payment for. I hate to say that, but that's probably yeah. pretty much how it goes. And if the best dentistry I ever saw was done in a country where dentists were paid by the hour, what they did was not important. 
They were paid for their time, and the patient's co-payment increased with the size of the filling. Well, that generates an interest in prevention because you want to keep your filling as small as possible. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's still the case, but that was the case when I worked in Switzerland. There was oh, huge right. motivation to teach people how to keep minimalistic treatment going on. I feel like I read something somewhere where the N and the NIH were primary medical doctors or, or medical doctors within the system were actually um, given, not necessarily maybe a financial award, but some sort of acknowledgement. They're like, your, your patients have less diseases than another. You need to go I in some like direction like that. They did some sort of study or they tried to do that to see what would happen to reduce costs. And I feel yeah. like I read that somewhere. It, I mean, it's I mean, the it makes obvious sense. way, but it's it makes just, sense. I don't know when it's going to happen. So in the meantime, I spend my life trying to teach patients and now you are mm -hmm. with your TikToks and different things. I think that's so great.